Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Geeta. I work as reader in audiology at All India Institute of Speech and Hearing Mysore. Today, I'm going to give an overview about implantable bone conduction hearing devices. Before starting with the topic, I would like to talk about ear hearing and conventional hearing aids. To make it easier for you all to understand about implantable bone conduction hearing devices. The ear consists of three parts: outer ear, middle ear and inner ear. The sound from the environment reaches the outer ear and gets transmitted to the inner ear through the middle ear. This is called a conduction pathway. The sound also reaches the inner ear through bones of the skull and this is called as bone conduction pathway. When there is hearing loss, wearing hearing aids is the treatment option in most cases. The picture here shows a few styles of conventional hearing aids which amplify and send sound through ear conduction mode. But some individuals may not be able to wear these ear conduction hearing aids because of problems in their outer or middle ears. The problem could be maldeveloped outer ear, recurrent infections in outer or middle ears, or any other conditions which prevent the person from using conventional hearing aids. But still, these individuals need to hear sounds louder. Hence, implantable bone conduction hearing device could be an option in these individuals. Even when there is single-sided deafness, that is, one ear has complete loss of hearing and the other ear has normal hearing, these individuals may be given the implantable bone conduction hearing device. The implantable bone conduction device is an alternative to a regular hearing aid. This device is worn on the head and it transfers the sound to the inner ear by vibrating the bones of the skull using bone conduction mode. A bone conduction hearing device has two parts, an external part which has a microphone and a speech processor and a surgically implanted internal part placed in the bone behind the ear by an ENT surgeon. There are different categories of these devices available in terms of amount of amplification it can give, in terms of connection between the external and internal components. There can be direct connection between the internal and external components or there could be skin in between the internal and external components. Any age group can be fitted with these devices. So surgery is not indicated for very young children. However, there are non-surgical fitting options available so that even young children for whom surgery cannot be done can still be fitted with these devices. There are different makes and models available and the device is named differently depending on the make and model. The selection of the suitable device among the available choices depend on the amount and type of hearing loss. For deciding if you are the right candidate for a bone conduction device, which type of device is suitable for you. A few tests including audiological and if indicated, radiological and other tests need to be done. Along with the detailed audiological evaluation, you may also need to undergo a listening test with the bone conduction sound processor to provide a reasonable expectation of the benefit that can be derived from an implantable bone conduction device. Once all the tests are done, you will be counselled about the potential benefits of implantable bone conduction devices. You will also be given detailed information on the treatment process including the surgical procedure, the time required for healing and activation of the device etc. Once the healing is over, the device will be fitted and you will be counselled about the use, care and maintenance of the device. I hope that the information given by me is useful. Thank you for listening.